So I gotta tell you, uh, I, I got, I've got a really weird uh, dog. I love my dog, don't get me wrong. Herky is, he's the best dog that I could possibly hope for, but he's definitely a weird dog. You can, you can put anything and everything in front of this dog and he will eat it, whatever it is. It doesn't make a difference what it is, except for celery. Celery, it's like kryptonite to him. You know, he avoids it like the plague. He, this dog will avoid his food and he'll go off in search of the cat's food and eat the cat's food instead of his own food. He's a weird dog, I'm telling you, he's a weird dog. The weirdest thing about my dog though is the way that he handles thunderstorms, fireworks, any loud bang, to be honest with you. Anything that's like that. Um, he, he, whenever he hears a thunderstorm or anything like that, he goes into this kind of panic mode, you know, and he starts shaking and panting and his little tail goes between his legs and then he starts following you around and then he starts getting really weird. What he does then is he will climb underneath our bed. There's not much room under there. I mean, I don't know how he fits, to be honest with you. But he crawls under there, and he starts scratching at the carpeting. What? What is he doing? He just scratches, scratches, scratches. You know, I'm trying to figure out what is he doing. Does he think that the thunder is some kind of, like, demonic battle going on under the floor, and he's trying to join the fun? I don't, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know. But it makes for really restless nights whenever there's a thunderstorm or whenever there's fireworks going on. So like right about this time of year, you know, we have this little thunder jacket that we put on them. Have you ever, guys ever seen these that you can put on dogs, a little thunder jacket and it's supposed to help them feel secure. It barely takes the edge off of him. Yeah. So I don't know. It's, it's kind of a weird thing. I, I, the, the silly thing is this dog doesn't realize that he is perfectly safe in the midst of the storm. He has nothing to worry about, right? I mean, I, I, can, I can hold him and reassure him. I can pet him. He can see the cat laying there completely unfazed by the storm. And yet every time a storm comes, this dog seems overcome by fear. Weird dog. I don't think my dog is the only one though, right? I mean, I've talked to enough dog owners. Do you all have dogs that are like this? Anyone have dogs that are like this? Okay. So I, I know that other dogs have trouble with storms, but I got to tell you, I've also talked to a lot of people who seem to have trouble handling storms. We had a, we had a doozy the other night, didn't we? Wednesday night. Man, was that strong. What a, what a strong storm that was. And, and for legitimate reasons, th that storm uh, knocked our numbers down for family night and for the Bible studies that we do on Wednesday because sometimes when these storms come, these really strong storms come, the safer thing is just to stay inside. Stay inside where it's dry and it's warm and it's safe, right? That's the safer thing. But of course, I think we all know that sometimes we can't escape from the storms, right? Sometimes the storms are going on inside of us. Sometimes the storms going on around us and we can't control them at all, right? Political storms or storms among world leaders or storms at work or at school. I mean, some of these storms are things that we really can't affect. We can't control those storms and they create fear in us, right? Just like my dog, just like my weird dog, sometimes the storms that are going on cause us to shake. But just like my weird dog, Sometimes what we don't understand is that the storms that are going on really can affect us. They really can affect us. We don't realize that. So I want you to take a look with me in, at a passage in your Bible. I want you to look at Mark chapter 4. Mark 4 in your Bible. It's going to be, you can use a Bible in front of you. Want. It's going to be about two-thirds of the way into your Bible. About two-thirds, you know, ish. Mark chapter 4. Uh, Mark is one of the gospel writers. And uh, so it means he's going to be near the beginning of the New Testament, Mark 4. Take a look at this. Mark is, I've probably mentioned this before, I don't know if I've mentioned this, that Mark is, it's commonly understood that Mark is the earliest of the gospel writers, that he was the first one to write a gospel. Um, but you'll see if you read all four gospels, he's also the shortest one. He's the shortest gospel. So if, you, uh, if you're looking for an introduction to the gospels, you can start there. It's the shortest one. So today we're going to look at this, at this really short story 
in Mark chapter 4, uh, verse, starting in verse 35. So we're going to be down uh, verse 35 most of the way through that chapter. So this is, this is what it says. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind, and he said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. If you, if you read through the Gospels, I, I, you see pretty quickly that Jesus uses storms as teaching moments. Every time there's a storm, every time there's a storm, he uses that opportunity to teach the disciples something. And the same thing is true right here. I don't know if you noticed this in the story. It was Jesus' idea to cross the lake. The, the disciples were not the ones who said, hey, Jesus, come across with us. It was Jesus' idea to cross over the lake. These guys, you know, half the disciples were fishermen. They didn't have radar, but they knew how to read weather patterns, don't you think? They, I, I can't imagine that this storm was a real shocker to any of them. And it certainly wasn't to Jesus, right? I mean, this did not catch him off guard. And so Jesus invites the disciples to go across the lake knowing that there's a storm coming. And he gets in the boat and he decides to take a nap. He decides to take a nap. <laughs> and so the storm comes and it hits and the disciples go into panic mode while Jesus just snoozes away. The thunder doesn't wake him up, the wind doesn't wake him up, the waves don't wake him up, the storm does not wake him up. The disciples wake him up by shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Don't you care that we're going to drown? Is that an interesting question? Don't you care that we're going to drown? Are, are our lives meaningless to you? <laughs> Do we matter to you right at this moment? Do you care? Do you care? You ever ask God in the midst of a storm if he actually cares about you? I remember, you know, I remember times when my kids were sick. I remember looking for work. I remember when, when bills were crashing into my boat, when relationships seemed to be at a breaking point, and I remember calling out, God, don't you care that I'm going to drown? Don't you care that I'm going to drown? And I look back now, and it seems like a silly question to ask, <laughs> you know? I mean, it seems silly now. Of course he cares, you know? Jesus died for me. He died in my place. He gave me the gift of eternal life. He has provided for every need that I've ever had. He answers my prayers. Why would I think that Jesus doesn't care about me? Why would I think that? You know why? Because the storms can be scary. And because they take our focus off of what we know to be true. So Jesus wakes up in the boat. He wakes up. And he calms the storm. Silence! Be still. Three words. Three little words. Three words. And everything calms down. The storm is gone. In three words, the storm is gone. And in the midst of the calm, he looks at the disciples and he asks them a question. Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Why are you afraid? Th think about this. Jesus isn't bothered by the storm. He 
he's sleeping on a cushion in the midst of the storm. He's not bothered by the storm. Why? Why is Jesus not bothered by the storm? There's a reason for this, guys. There's a reason. The reason is Jesus knows something that's really helpful for us to remember. There is no storm in our lives that is bigger than God. Think about it. God is bigger than any storm that we face in life. Jesus, Jesus takes these disciples out into the storm <laughs> knowing that as long as he's there, they are completely safe. See, the problem with storms, the problem with storms, whether they are physical thunderstorms with pounding rain or tumultuous relationships or hostile work environments, the problem with storms is that they evoke fear in us. Storms evoke fear. It's what they do. And the fear can overwhelm us in that present moment. In that moment, the fear can overwhelm us. I mean, think about this, guys. The disciples had been with Jesus. They knew him. They knew him. They knew his miracles. They knew his power. What would cause them at that moment to think that he doesn't care about them? Why would they think in that moment that they were in any real danger? Why would they think that? They knew Jesus. They knew him. It seems silly, doesn't it? But I can ask myself the same question. I can ask myself that. I mean, I look back over my life. I have experienced the grace of God more times than I can count. I mean, I've lost track of how many times I've experienced God pulling me out of a situation. He has never, ever not come through for me. Every single time, God has come through for me. And yet, you know something? The next storm that hits my life is going to create fear in me again because it's what storms do to us. It's what they do. So I've got to remind myself that there is no storm in life that is bigger than my God. There is no storm bigger than my God. And if Jesus is in my boat, then I have nothing to fear. In the midst of my worry and my anxiety, you know, you know Jesus, he looks at me and he says, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And I say to him, I say to him, it's not that I don't have faith. I, sometimes I just forget to use it. You know, sometimes in the midst of the storm, sometimes in the midst of the storm, I forget that you have promised that you're right there, that you're going to walk with me, that you're going to protect me, that you will never leave me nor forsake me. I have faith. Sometimes I just forget to use it. And so when I get overwhelmed by fear, I, I wake him up. I wake him up. And he looks at me and he looks at the storms and he says, silence. Just be still. All of us face storms in our lives. Every single one of us. We all face storms. Health issues are storms. The changing world landscape is a storm. Financial burdens are a storm. These emotions that sometimes just kind of bubble up out of nowhere. The violence that's sweeping across our nation, right? Attested to by the shirts out front. Some of the storms that you and I face, some of them other people look at and say, that's nothing. That's nothing. That's little. But to us, it feels huge. Some of the storms that we face are communal storms, which means we face them together. And other storms are intensely individual. Feels like it's just you out in the middle. But listen, guys, this is important. All the storms that we face, whatever they are, they have the potential to derail us and toss us out into a sea of fear. It has the potential to do that. We're faced with a decision in our storm to allow the storm to overwhelm us or we look to the one who is unfazed by storms. Do you get what I'm saying? When you're in a storm in your life, whatever it is, you look at the storm. You can focus on the storm and what it can do to you, or you look to the one who is not phased by storms. Because you've got someone in your boat that can conquer any storm in life. There is no storm that is bigger than our God. So here's the big question. Here's the big question for the day. If Jesus is in your boat, why fear the storms? If he's in your boat, why fear the storms? You know, I, I can't make Herky understand 
that he has nothing to fear when it thunders. I can't make him understand that. I can pat him and reassure him, but I can't force him to get it, that he's safe. But you and I, we have the ability to think through these situations. We can think it through. So when you think about the storms that are going on in your life right now, you think about the storms that you're facing, whatever they might be, political storms, relationship storms, work, emotional stuff, whatever it might be, are you, are you trying to battle through that storm alone? Are you trying to face that storm by yourself on your own power? Are you just rowing as hard as you can? Or are you turning to Jesus for guidance through the storm? Because if you're just battling through it on your own, if you're trying to keep your boat afloat by yourself, you're ignoring the one who knows the storms better than you do. And you're likely going to get tossed out into a sea of fear. So if Jesus is in your boat, you've got to ask the question, why am I afraid of the storms if he's in my boat? Now listen, here's the other important thing. If Jesus isn't in your boat, <laughs> if he's not in your boat, you have every reason to fear the storms. We, we sang a song earlier, right? Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. He is mine. Second service, we're going to be singing a song called uh, All to Jesus I Surrender. Listen, you've got to ask yourself this. If he isn't yours, <laughs> if you haven't surrendered to him, if he's not in your boat, the storms that we face in life, are, are, they're real. And they're dangerous. And here's why. Here's why. What the storms do in our lives, what they do, is they push us into a place of uncertainty in life. They create instability within our spirit. That's what the storms do. It creates instability there. You can kind of you can kind of picture the devil using storms in your life to push you further and further away from shore, further away from hope, further away from security. That's what the devil does, okay? Now, if Jesus is in your boat, if he's in your boat, he is your anchor. You're not going to go anywhere. He's got you secure, even if it feels scary. Even if it feels like the wind is trying to push you and the storm's trying to push you, if he's your anchor, you're secure. If he's not your anchor, if you don't have him in your boat and you're just paddling as hard as you can, there is nothing holding you down. You're going to get blown even further and further out into hopelessness and fear, instability. It's what the devil uses storms for. The further we get blown out into hopelessness, the harder it is to hear God calling us to listen to him. So if Jesus is in your boat right now, if he's in your boat, I want to encourage you today to talk to him. Think about the storms that are going on in your life right now. Think about them. I mean, I know, I know we got busy days. It's really worthwhile to carve out half an hour and think about the storms that you're facing. What is it that's creating anxiety in your life? Maybe it's something that is, that is going on in the world landscape. Maybe it's something that is personal to you. Think about the storms. And then just, listen, invite Jesus into your storm. Invite him into your storm. You don't have to go running around screaming like the disciples did, you know? I mean, that, that shows a lack of faith. Just picture your storm and picture Jesus speaking into your storm. Silence. Be still. Because you, you've got nothing to fear. You've got nothing to fear from these storms because there is no storm in life that is bigger than your God. You've got someone in your boat that can conquer the storms. One last thing. If Jesus isn't in your boat, please today invite him in. If you need prayer for that, if you need help with that, if you just need reassurance in the midst of your storm, I, I want to invite you after the service, just come right up front. I'll, I'll pray with you. Okay, one last, last thing. Sometimes the storms that we face are caused by the people near us, right? I mean, you guys are aware of that. Sometimes the people around us cause the storms for us. Sometimes, sometimes we cause the storms for others. So I want to ask you today to take some moments and evaluate your own attitudes 
towards other people. Hold up the way that you think about people and, and evaluate your attitudes compared with God's heart, okay? Evaluate your attitude towards people. Take some time today. Evaluate the words that you speak, the words that you speak to other people or the words that you speak about them when they're not around. Evaluate that. Evaluate the drama that you may be inviting by the way that you respond to situations. Just take some time and do some self-evaluation. It's a heartbreaking thing when we understand that Jesus goes around calming storms and we may be the ones that are whipping them up for others. So today, just understand, guys, your Lord is so near, right in your boat, right in your boat, whatever storm you're facing. If you're in the midst of a storm, just hold him tight. But listen, what he wants you to do is, if, if others are in the midst of a storm right now, he wants you to share them with them. I'm going to ask you to pray with me this morning. Lord, we see over and over in Scripture that, that when these storms come up, the disciples get scared, and, and they start to lose their focus, and they start to look at the storms and the winds and the waves instead of looking at you, and you come into the picture and you calm them again and again and again. And, and we find that we do the same thing ourselves. We hit these storms in life, and we don't know how to react, and we start to go into panic mode, and we forget that you're right there. You're right there. And so we pray that today we would be, we would be aware of that, that we would recognize your intimate presence in our lives, and that we would remember that whatever the storm is, it's not bigger than you. You're bigger than any storm. So come into the storms in our lives. Silence them. Quiet them and reassure us these things we pray in the beautiful name of Christ our Lord. Amen.